Tom and I always wanted our children close together. Hazel was nine months old when I found out that I was pregnant, so we got our wish that they were really close together. We had a dating scan and I had said to Tom, I wonder if it's going to be twins because I felt really sick and he just said, no, it can't be. And then at the dating scan, lo and behold, there it was, two, two babies. I had a really smooth, uncomplicated pregnancy and I made it to almost 38 weeks and I managed to deliver them naturally at the Women's and Children's Hospital and it was fantastic. The girls came into this world beautifully and healthy, except we did realise that having three under 17 months was going to be chaos. And it is chaos. So all babies in hospital undergo newborn hearing screening and Edie passed that with flying colours and then unfortunately Florence didn't. We didn't really think anything of it as the people doing the test just said it's probably fluid. And on the day of discharge they redid the test and again she didn't pass. Uh, it was repeated to us that it's probably just fluid and it's nothing to be worried about. We had three under 17 months, we didn't worry about it. We had a follow-up test when she was two weeks old and she failed again. And it kind of hit me that, oh, maybe there is actually something wrong. Um, and we were told the odds are one in 1,000 that a child is born with hearing loss. I remember leaving that and just falling. Um, Tom met me and we kind of came to the conclusion that what are the chances that our little Florence is that one in a thousand? And then just before six weeks old, we went in for more thorough comprehensive audiology testing and they kept doing the tests and kept doing the tests and it was taking a really long time and it kind of clicked that, oh, something might actually be wrong. And then the audiologist, she was lovely, broke the news that she did have hearing loss and it was permanent and in both ears, mild to moderate. I just went straight to, oh my goodness, she has to wear hearing aids, she's gonna to go to school, she's gonna get bullied, and she's gonna be seen as, I guess, the weaker twin out of the two of them. And I found it really tricky to deal with and same with Tom, and we're quite positive people and we're trying to look at the positive side, but still, our baby has a disability. It's not, it's not what you plan for. The two things that made clear to us was that she needed hearing aids and she needed early intervention and so we were given brochures of places that do offer early intervention and Can Do For Kids was one of them. I would heard of Can Do For Kids because my dad donates to them and he has been doing for as long as I can remember and so I organised a meeting to come and see what it was all about and so I met Chris, uh, one of the listening and speaking specialists and she just made me feel really reassured that this is the place that Florence is going to thrive in and learn how to listen and speak and she gave me confidence that she will be okay. I just feel like having can do for kids on our side is that Florence is going to be okay. She's going to learn to listen, she's going to learn to speak and yeah we're going to have hurdles along the way but she will be okay. If someone was considering donating to Can Do For Kids, I would say it's a great foundation to donate to and it gives children hope that they're gonna live a happy, beautiful life.